This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. What's fascinating is when you look at this graphic is that man was created to work in all three heavens. Your spirit man was made to function from the presence of God. How many know that? Your spirit man was made to function in the third heaven, to function in the court of God, to function in service to God. Your soul was, corresponds with the second heaven that the, 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 the divine counsel that we talk about that fell, they were supposed to basically whisper in the soul of men to keep us on track in service to God. So they, they can help, they help control the mind, the will, and the emotions. And then everybody knows what the body is. When man fell, when man sinned, we were cut off from that third heaven. And so all those forces were the only thing speaking into us. We're very soulish, aren't we? And the soulish and the carnal kind of intertwine together. But the day that you're born again, that you truly repent and you get right with Jesus, that you're reconnected to the third heaven because death means separation. You have gone from death to life. But what we got to learn how to do is to learn how to move from this higher spatial dimension. And it explains a lot of things. I began to research this out. And when you begin to move up in, in, into hyperspace, time is different. You get all the way up to the third heaven, they go through a day, we went through a thousand years, okay? You know what's scary when you understand dimension zero? A day here may feel like a thousand years in hell. Boy, I tell you what, that'll make you want to evangelize. Okay? When this is all said and done, we get to heaven, we're going to say, God, why did it take so long? He said, what are you talking about six days? <laughs> but also, when you get into higher spatial dimensions, distance is different. Yep. That's why when Henry Gruber, when God took him and, and showed him the galaxies and stuff, uh, in one of his testimonies, he's freaking out a guy from NASA that's saying, wait a minute, you way, 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 way broke the speed of light. Not if you go into a higher spatial dimension because you, the distance is different. That's why when somebody is translated, they're just lifted up into that spatial dimension, moved over an inch, you're on the other side of the planet. In fact, when you look in Ephesians 6 where it talks about uh, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, that rulers in the Greek is, is cosmos crater, which literally is identified with the planets in our solar system. That those thrones are established on those planets, but in the second heaven, they're still controlling earth. Because the distance is different. Ever felt like heaven was far away? It's not. Heaven, the third heaven, the throne of God's right here. Amen. Amen. The first heaven, heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven take up all the same space. Amen. Oh, the devil was just trying to give you a feeling so that you would lose faith. The Bible says that when I pray in the book of Hebrews, that my hope that's within me appears beyond the veil. Amen. All it has to do is go three inches, and it's right there. 
Heaven is so much closer than we realize. And we were created to move in it. Amen. There is so much available to you with God that it's almost beyond your comprehension. And I want, I want to get you moving in what God wants you to do. We got to learn how to function from the third heaven. Why is this important? I've already departed from my notes. This is okay. Why do we need to move in third heaven? Elijah with the, with the prophets at Mount Carmel. Okay, the, the, they enter into this competition, and the competition is if you lose, you die. Do you think those prophets of Baal couldn't call down fire? Come on now. If, if you can't, you're a dead man. They did it many, many times. They, they said, no problem, we got this. But a man walking in the third heaven that was connected to the third heaven because he was a prophet of God, when third heaven realities come, they supersede second heaven. So when you're moving in the authority of Christ, which is a third heaven principle, you shut down what the second heaven can do. Yes. Yes, oh, that ought to make you real happy right now. And our problem is we got to learn how to walk in the Spirit. we got to learn how to walk in this new dynamic. When I got born again, I was reconnected. The Torah of God was written on my heart. The Holy Ghost moved in. I had a friend that got to meet with Errol Sharon, and he was interested in Torah. And, and uh, Errol Sharon said, why are you interested in Torah? And he said, well, this Jew moved into me when I got saved. I love the Word of God. He, 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 he likes keeping His Word. He's the one that gave it. That's all there, but we have got to learn how to flow in it. I also want to discover what makes the enemy tick. At, at the military, you have to control their, their communication lines and their supply lines, don't you? Well, I want to take a look at the fall of Lucifer. This is out of Ezekiel 28, 15. It says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. And iniquity there is evel, or evil, evel. That's where we get the word evil from, which literally means that he, that he, he not only loves injustice, but he has a violent reaction to anything of God. Sounds like the devil, doesn't it? But when it says found in him, it means to secure, define, to attain. That he, he is the anointed cherub that covered. And when he, when, he, when he did his five I wills to create a pseudo grace for himself to ascend, when he tried to ascend, it corrupted his anointing and made something brand new that had never been seen before. And it was the opposite of God that has a violent reaction to God. And that is what powers his very kingdom. Whenever we preach the gospel and we turn men's hearts right to God, uh, the iniquity force in the earth is lowered. Amen. Okay? We start preaching hyper grace and cotton candy, the iniquity force. We got preachers that don't even know how to define sin. But you see, Lucifer's not like God. This is one of the things I deal with in the Sharif Imperative. He's not like God. He's not all-powerful. He's limited in power. He's created this new force, and his entire kingdom is operating on that force. God puts a fire in the midst of him to begin to devour him to actually diminish that force. And so he finds a man in the earth that is made of Adama of earth that he can plant the iniquity force as a seed and when man begins to sin, we become batteries for the kingdom of darkness. Does that make sense? That's why sin in your life is such a threat because the very sin that you're harboring is empowering the devil to destroy you. That's why we need to be quick to repent and bring it under the blood. And so he began to form this in his life. The occultists have known this for a long, long time. This is a quote out of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. They, have, they, they know there is a force, there is a power that they want to get a hold of and, and, and to control. Listen to this. There is in nature one of the most potent forces by, uh, by means whereof a single man, could he possess himself of it and should know how to direct it, could revolutionize and change the face of the world. This force is known to the ancients. 
It is a universal agent whose supreme law is equilibrium and whereby if science, you see science, what we call modern science, is a byproduct of sorcery. In fact, many of them, like Sir Francis Bacon, that was, you know, doing the age of reason and, and we're getting rid of everything that is not reasonable so miracles aren't reasonable. He was also an occultist looking how to tap into a force to do occult miracles. Isn't that crazy? They said, now listen, now scientifically, you can also tap into this force not just from occult ritual, but through science if we can learn how to master it. And this was written Civil War time. They were looking at science to do this. It would be possible to change the order of the seasons to produce a night the phenomenon of day, to send a thought in an instant around the world to heal or to slay at a distance to give our words universal success and to make them reverberate everywhere. This agent particularly revealed by the blind guesses of the disciples of Mesmer is precisely what the adepts of the Middle Ages called the, ele the elementary matter of the great work. The Gnostics had uh, it composed in, in the Ignatius body of the Holy Spirit, and it was adorned in the secret rites of Sabbat, which is uh, the Sabbatan Kabbalics, or the temple under the hieroglyphic figure of Baphomet, or the uh, homorphodytic goat of Mendes. So they, they knew they have known that there's always this power. It's, it, it's the power of what we would call magic, of what they would call magic. That they say that if anybody could ever master this power, if I had someone that was my enemy on the other side of the planet, just they thought, and they're a dead man. That's what they're wanting to tap into, that iniquity force. They know it's there. And they have been laboring for millennia to try to get into it, try to perfect it. In fact, what I thought is interesting, if you go on and read this quote, it goes on to say that there is a life force principle of the world, a universal agent wherein are two natures, a double current of love and wrath. Oh, there's a dark side to the force. In fact, that is most likely where George Lucas got the idea of the force behind Star Wars. There's the good side and the bad side of the force. Well, there's, you know, there's white witchcraft and there's black witchcraft. How many know, it, I don't hear black and white. What I hear is witchcraft. Yeah. It's all bad. Yeah. They're looking for ways to tap into that and to control that. That's part of the agenda of the elite in the day that we're living in. And I believe Watcher Technology is going to help them to do it. I also, we also find the concept of the iniquity force hidden in the writings of the Apostle Paul. I mean, oh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the powers and rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Now, when you look at this in the Greek, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, all are entities. They're, they're like classes of immortals. Spiritual wickedness is not. The true Greek words literally mean it's of a higher, that there's, there's a spiritual aspect to it, but it's spiritual iniquity. How many know the Bible talks about the river of God? Well, the devil, when he created his kingdom, he simply does a dark version mirror of the kingdom of God. He has a dark river. It's a river of the iniquity force that flows through the second heaven. And the principalities and powers and all of them have been trying to teach men how to tap into that, to influence that, to control planet Earth. Sometimes they will use pedophilia. Sometimes they will use child sacrifice. Sometimes they will use transjugethian magic. They will do all these different things to try to find a way of tapping into that force, to master it. Well, all at the same time, because, you know, when you, when you do stuff like that, and you do the magic, it's... it's you don't always get guaranteed results. But science, one of the bases of science is you can replicate it every single time. And so they're looking at science as a way of mastering into that force and moving things forward. Let's go a little further. I also believe that there's a progressive falling away of the angels. 
You know, so many times in Revelation when we read this, I've had people say, see, one-third of the angels fell when Lucifer fell, but this is not dealing with the fall of Lucifer. This is an event that's going to happen during the tribulation period. That by the time you get to this part in the tribulation period, God sends Michael down and he throws all these beings out of the second heaven into the first heaven. How many know that hadn't happened yet? But by the time that we get there, it's going to be one-third of the immortals fell because of Lucifer. Lucifer fell by himself. In the garden, we have the Nehesh, that seraph that got up into a tree, that flaming seraph. And if you understand how a seraph can manifest, he set that tree on fire. The Greeks would call that the fire of Prometheus, promising illumination. Now, if you understand the symbolism of that, all this started with a seraph in a tree setting it on fire, promising knowledge. God calls to Moses and says, I don't need a tree. I'll do a bush. <laughs> and I'll set an anointing in you that will absolutely destroy what the Nekesh was doing in Egypt. Not only that, why was Jesus, why did they call the cross a tree? You started this in a tree? I'm going to finish this thing in a tree. Come on now. So you have the Nehesh in the garden promising, uh, promising illumination so that you can become gods like us, the immortals. Then at the Tower of Babel, you have principalities and powers fell. You have those 72 that fell, so there was a progressive falling away. And even in the Apostle Paul in his own mind, because in his day, the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, you know, some of the books we've been talking about, they were in common circulation, and the Old Testament had not been canonized yet. In the time of Jesus, the, the Torah was set, the prophets were set, but the writings were still in flux. And one of the reasons I believe that, that the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, and the book of Jubilees was not included into the canon is the rabbis rejected it about 100 A.D. because they said it was these writings that caused everybody to start looking for Jesus. And so they set it aside. Guys. We're a whole lot closer to stuff than we realize. Now, I'm not saying that those are Scripture, okay? But one of the things that you do when you begin studying theology and become a researcher, you begin studying all the surrounding cultural literature of the time. You cannot, if, if you separate the book of Enoch out of the New Testament, you've erased a lot of the New Testament because it was within their mindset. Jesus, I mean, he, he was making a bold statement about Herman, Okay? I'm going I'm to transform and show you who I really am. Now come get me. You know? I, I tell you what, it's like, you know, there's, there's a showdown going to be in Jerusalem. Amen. They didn't know that they were going to be the ones that got took down. But there's been this progressive side to everything that they're constantly falling. Now what's interesting, and one of the reasons that we look at a lot of these extra writings and this is from the, the Journal of Biblical Literature. And he's talking about several theologians that when they look at Genesis 6, 1 through 4, for the true theologian and the researcher, it's frustrating. Because they know the whole story's not there. They say, you know, it's, it's like an erratic cracked boulder. It's, it's like a torso without the legs and the heads. And it, 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 it's an incomplete picture. Now, later on, this same researcher says, well, you know, my, my reason for this, I believe, is that the Yahwehist, the one, you know, Moses, as he was being, uh, writing when God told him, God was interested in saying, listen, the moral corruption, it was the moral corruption that God wanted to center on. In fact, throughout the Old Testament, most of the stuff that we can look back in retrospect and we can talk about the divine counsel and we can talk about the fall of Lucifer and all these things, the Jews did not see. It was, perfect, it was purposely obscured by God because they would have run after them if they realized they were real entities. The prophet said, listen, these are just stones that can't talk. Don't, don't go messing with this stuff. I'm the true God. I'm, I'm actually speaking and I'm doing and I'm delivering. Jesus comes on the scene and he starts talking more about them in the four gospels than you find in all the Old Testament. You know why? He brought the cure. Yes, amen. 
Now that now you once you're in me, you can understand the spiritual warfare that's going on. Once I have paid for your redemption, I'm going to make you a part of my army, and I'm going to give you authority over these guys, and you're going to begin setting the nations free of their influence. That's our job. That's every one of our job is to do that. Let's go a little bit further. Because I want to concentrate on this with where we're going. I'm not going to talk about the watchers per se. I'm not going to talk about Nephilim and, and genetic engineering and all that because I, I think there's a lot at play. There was something given that the watchers brought that they, that they built, that they gave, that caused men's hearts to be continually filled with evil. Continually. That resonated with man, that so contaminated his mind that God said, I've got to put a stop to this. There were only a few that weren't affected, and they were the household of Noah. So was there something in place? Was there something done? Was it, was it, was it just the knowledge? Was it just the influence of the watchers? Was it the tweaking of the DNA? Was, was there more? And that's one of the questions I want to ask today. It, was there more, and can we see things being rebuilt in our generation? Now, when you look at the time of the watchers, and this, when you begin studying ley lines, Ley lines are, ley line, are, are lines within the earth, magnetic fields within the earth that have great occult power. In fact, one of the things that I have, that I have discovered, and I'm not really a big sports guy, so if I'm getting ready to break your, your sports bubble, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> But have you ever noticed like with the Super Bowl and these different ones, they'll, they'll have this multi-million dollar stadium and they'll have the Super Bowl or something and there's, there's actually occult things going on with a lot of the Super Bowl halftime stuff and, and, and being able to pull from, the, from the, the people being involved in it to direct psychic power and occult power out of it. And, but if they don't get the response they need, have, haven't you wondered, why did you guys tear down that stadium and build one, you know, a block over? Perfectly good stadium. You tear it down. They repositioned it on a better spot on the ley line. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Now, when you look at the ancient world, how I many know that it was Pangea back then? All the continents were together as one. Wow. And you had all these ley lines that were moving in occult power, and they connected to all the monolithic and all the pyramids on the planet, all the pyramids and the ziggurats. And there, there are pyramids all over. China has a pyramid. There are pyramids on the bottoms of the oceans. There, there are pyramids everywhere. There was this power grid established of occult power that was radiating from the earth that the, that the watchers and their children built. And I believe it was part of the mechanism that was causing man's hearts to be completely darkened bringing them under their control. And see, this is so important to understand antediluvian period. It, it, was, a, it was a time of great technology. They, they were opening up portals and jumping different places on the earth. They, they were being able to, to splice DNA, all these different things. Uh, Steve has talked so much about how that, um, that our, our governments are scouring the earth looking for antediluvian technology that's much more advanced than our own. And I've also discovered that technology and sorcery are two sides of the same coin. Oh, yeah. In fact, occult power can flow through electronics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. How many have watched a video that was taped, let's say, of, of Henry Gruber that was taped 10 years ago, and you have the Holy Ghost moving through that thing to the place where it about brings you to your knees in your own living room? If God's power can flow through it, come on, and they know it. And so when God created the flood, and this, this is taken from Stan Dale last year at the uh, Ozark, or not the Ozark, the Rocky Mountaineer National Prophecy Conference, that this is literally an image of the ocean of the meteor or the asteroid that was used by God to cause the flood. Wow. That a meteor struck with such force it broke the canopy that would cause it to rain. It struck with such force that it broke up the, the waters of the deep that begin to come up. And you had the flood, but the aftershocks of it caused the continents to separate. 
And when that happened, it dismantled the grid. Does that make sense? God said, you know what? I'm going to take down your grid because I saw what it did. And what's interesting is you have the giants after the flood. They just keep getting shorter and shorter. Goliath was a midget. Come on now. I mean, when you we look at the ones in Joshua's day, his head was about up to one of their knees. Because as that power diminished, and I think, I think God actually changed our physiology with the flood, it made it harder for them to do what they did and begin to diminish. That's why with the greys, which I believe are simply avatars of the watchers, why they're so interested in, in reproduction is they're trying to figure out how to overcome what God did with the flood when he changed our physiology. There, and so there, there's so much of that going on. Now, we can go a little bit further. This is one of my favorite quotes out of Dune. Observe the plans within plans within plans. This is how the Illuminati works. They never come at you one way, and this is something Donald Trump is uh, unfortunately learning. They will come at you seven ways. They have plans within plans within plans within plans. They're, they're, they're GMOing this at the same time. They're genetic airing. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.